Now, the purpose of our seminar um, this evening is to have sort of three interlinked discussions centering on key transport issues for London, getting your views and ideas, hearing from our speakers, and maybe moving towards some kind of consensus on each of these issues. And this will help me in terms of my work, whether as um, the Liberal Democrats transport spokesperson or as, as chair of the transport committee um, here at City Hall. And on each of um, our topics, we're going to hear from two different guest speakers, and then we're going to allow some time for discussion and questions from the floor. First of all, we're going to hear from Ed Fordham, who is a campaign for Camden, and then we're going to hear from Richard Ford from the Campaign for Better Transport. So, Ed, to start off with, Ed Fordham works for the Local Government Association, he campaigns on transport issues and any other issue you can think of. <laughs> so, a um, pleasure to introduce Ed. Thank you. Um, I just need to take my twit pick of you all, uh, if I can, so that Nick at the back can retweet it on, uh, which is what he's been doing as I've been documenting. There we go, bingo. And we'll just, and we'll just go send tweet. Wonderful. Okay. Um, <laughs> we've got 500 twi- Twitter followers in Camden and one of them Stephen Fry, so it's quite important. Um, <laughs> I'm standing for the constituency of Hampson and Kilburn at the general election. It's uh, in North London, and as I like to joke, uh, it's above the thing formerly known as the big blue wavy river that used to be on a map. Um, I want to talk specifically about uh, railways uh, and trains and tubes and pick up some of the detail that's been touched on. Um, in the seat I'm, I'm active in, we have 18 railway stations, so it's quite an issue. Um, Jubilee, Bakerloo, Overground, uh, London Euston, most of the main lines. Um, yeah, you name it, we've got the problem in rail terms. Um, more railway bridges and thousands of pigeons to follow them, um, and virtually every road. Um, I say that the seat is the first motorway in Britain. It's called Watling Street, Kilburn High Road. Um, so, what have the Romans ever done for us? They created a hell of a traffic problem. Um, Railway transport, however, I think has gone through quite a few phases about who owns it. And it's one of the threads I want to pick up in this. I think, first of all, uh, transport came from constructors. Railways were built to move uh, construction traffic originally. Then traders uh, picked up the railway theme. Landowners, and we had the age of competition. Um, I'm going back quite a way and coming forwards. We then moved into what I call nationalised service, and then Beeching intervened uh, in terms of cutting back railways. But then the age of the train. And I think we're now in a different era. And I noticed on, I think it's the history of the railways.com, uh, they say 1992 onwards yet to be written. Um, and I think that's the era in, we're in. But I want to contend uh, one thing in particular, and that's that I think my uh, £99.20 a month Oyster card for Zone 1 and 2, I think that gives me a direct shareholding in the way Transport for London is conducted. And if you're from Transport for London, some of this may not be entirely gentle listening. Um, I should add, I got this morning my letter about the 13th of September uh, uh, rail replacement service, um, and they said, Dear Mr Fordham, uh, we wish to write about the closure of the Bakerloo line. And I rang this morning, so I rang about the closure of the Overground. Um, different line, but I'm glad to know it was also closed on the same day. Um, so my question today is, what are you going to do, TFL, about the closure of the Overground and the Jubilee line this weekend? My question next week is what are you going to do when the woman who you drop off at Harleston Station late at night, where you can't see the railway station from the point you drop her off at, doesn't get on that train, and there's then a police inquiry? My question next month is what are you going to do when you start uh, dropping passengers off at the Met Line, because Sarah Tether uh, beat you up frequently enough, you now conceded that you can stop at Wilsdon Green and Neasden. Um, but are you going to concede that actually you denied for seven months that that was possible, even though we knew you'd lengthened the track three years ago to do it? Um, My question next year is what are you going to do when you cancel phase three refurbishment of the overground Um, and what about the plans um, that TfL are now denying um, that users are going to be fed into the process but actually uh, most of the user comments have been dropped. And then for the next two years, and this is half a joke, um, you don't have to laugh, my campaign manager if she were here would always laugh, Um, but when is it going to stop being transport for Olympics and start being transport for Londoners? Um, My challenge to TfL is that one of them tries feeding in some comments. Try ringing a TfL phone line. Try 
getting something changed. Yeah. Try having a dialogue and leave the dialogue feeling like you've been listened to. Um, it's relatively easy, I've discovered, to get a named contact at the top. It's relatively easy to get their email and to harass them unforgivingly. Um, but the middle management is impenetrable. It's dominated by nods and winks, and they're not good ones. Everyone knew that uh, Hampstead Heath had been moved from Zone 3 to Zone 2, um, but it waited for Mayor Ken to decide, because it's a top-level decision to move a station that should have been in Zone 2 for, for oh, ever since, but has been in Zone 3 by error of a map drawing. Everyone knows overground transport is a joke. North London Line has used to be named. Um, everyone knows it doesn't understand passenger care, but the, it's tolerated and protected as a conversation. The change is too slow, and the structures are almost as immovable as the track. I think we want services that work for us, and where we have an opinion. The intransigence, the lack of empathy with the travelling public is now gone, I think, too far. TfL, I genuinely think, are breaking faith with the passengers they claim to serve. We know they mislaid eight miles of track on the Jubilee line and are now taking it up and relaying it. We know the Met trains could have stopped at Wilston Green and Neasden all along, but it's taken months to get the acknowledgement and then the concession. And we know that TfL is a shambles. Well, they don't seem to contest that. I think it's time to shift a step change in TfL. I don't joke when I say the Oyster card is now a shareholder card and it requires a mindset so fundamentally different to what we currently have. I say, I say to them, stop being so secretive, stop denying there are problems and saying, oh, we're fixing them, bear with us. Deploy your best people, not necessarily the best paid, deploy your best people in the front line. Stop hiring people who don't know the area, putting them on a station on a Saturday or a Sunday and expecting them to cope with people who know the area better. Get out of your ivory tower, get down to the gates of the closed stations at the weekends and start listening. Give us genuine passenger forums. Explain closure before and during the works. Communicate with local traders. Discover that councillors exist. Grasp the basic reality that you might have told the council, but you haven't told the councillors. Understand that traveling, traveling passengers have views and comments that might help. You can put the railway uh, uh, bike rack on the northbound side of Hampstead Heath station, but the bike users are going southbound. <laughs> Realize, if nothing else, we are paying it's our railway station. I am an Oyster card holder. I am your shareholder. It's our service, not yours. You don't have to respond, TfL, but I intend to get elected, and I'm not going to go quietly.